The Philippines sent the largest government delegation to COP10. Wow! Wow! Ganun ba tayo kayaman? Ganun ba ka-importante sa atin na tapagtakpan at, at tulungan ang tobacco industry na kailangan pang sabi samahan ng 30 government officials? On February 14, 2024, Valentine's Day, my heart was broke by Senator Pia Cayetano. I mean, suspension, iinom muna ako ng tubig dahil uh, I will be emoting here and I, I know this Senate President will like my topic, so please remain, sir. Oh, okay. Yes, uh, uh, Sasha suspended for me. Yes, sir. Please proceed, uh, madam. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, I rise on a matter of personal and collective privilege. For the fifth time, the Philippines has received the Dirty Ashtray Award. The reason is we were blocking global tobacco control efforts. When I say we, it is a great embarrassment to me, Your Honor, that the representatives for us, for the Philippines, stood before a global audience of mostly health advocates and they advocated for the tobacco industry, Mr. President. Global Alliance for Tobacco Control again awarded the notorious Dirty Ashtray to the Philippine delegation on the last day of the 10th session of the Conference of Parties, otherwise known as COP10, to the WHO Framework Convention on Tobacco Control, otherwise known as WHO FCTC, held in Panama City from February 5 to 10. The FCTC is a treaty negotiated under the auspices of the World Health Organization created in response to the tobacco epidemic. The treaty has 168 signatories and 180 parties, including the Philippines. The Philippines ratified the FCTC on February 22, 2005. According to the WHO, the FCTC provides a global response to the global tobacco epidemic. It described the FCTC as an evidence-based treaty that reaffirms all people's right to the highest standard of health. Regular sessions of the COP are held every two years. The Philippine delegation this year was given the Dirty Ashtray Award for its brazen use of tobacco industry tactics to dispute and delay throughout COP10. According to the Southeast Asia Tobacco Control Alliance, otherwise known as SIATCA, after almost three days of deliberation, parties failed to achieve consensus to establish an expert group to facilitate implementation of FCTC Article 9 and 10 on the regulation and disclosure of the contents and emission of tobacco products, with the Philippines joining a minority of parties blocking consensus. What is Article 9 and Article 10? Article 9 deals with the testing and measuring of the content and emission of tobacco products and their regulation. My dear colleagues, mga kababayan, sino ba may ayaw na itest at sukatin ang laman ng tobacco products? Bakit ayaw? Bakit ayaw ipatest? Ano ba laman nun na ayaw ipaalam sa atin? Bakit naman tayo may delegation na hinaharang ang information na makakasakit sa ating mga kabataan. Hinaharang dahil meron silang nilalagay doon na alam nila nakakasama sa kabataan. Imagine, ganun ang nga ginagawa nila dirty tactics, sinuportahan pa ng gobyernong to. Sinama pa sila at sinuportahan pa ang ganitong mga pangyayari. Nakakahiya, Mr. President. Now, what is Article 10? Article 10 deals with the disclosure of information on such content and emission to government authorities and the public. Disclosure of information. Ang nais lang naman ipaglaban ng health advocates is kayong mga tobacco product sellers, distributors, tobacco companies, legal naman ang pagbebenta nyo. Pinayagan naman kayo magbenta sa aming bansa. Pero you must conform to regulation. You must disclose kung ano laman ng mga produkto nyo para ma-regulate naman kayo. Dahil kung hindi kayo ma-regulate, Paano naman ang mga kabataan? Paano naman din ang may edad na na-addict? Dahil nga may mga laman niya na nakaka-addict at nakakasama sa katawan. Why in the world would we send a delegation that would, be, that would prevent full disclosure of harmful ingredients in tobacco products, including vapes and e-cigs? Why? 
because we do not have the political will to fight against these tobacco companies. Nakakahiya. It's bad enough that these tobacco companies are allowed to get away with it. But it is even worse and unacceptable that sinasamahan pa, sa, sinasamahan pa sila, inimbita pa na sumama dito sa conference na to. Ang sumasama dapat sa conference na to, health advocates. Kung gusto naman ng tobacco companies na fair lang ang, ang turing sa kanila, makapagbenta sila, nakakapagbenta naman sila eh. Regulation lang ang gusto natin. And sinamahan pa sila, holding hands pa sila ng ating mga government officials to attend this international conference. I have no words, Mr. President. It is an embarrassment. According to the reports, the Philippines proposed a compromise option that further muddled the discussion and caused more delays. My God! My Lord! Bakit ba kayo pinanganak at nagdala pa kayo ng ganyan tao sa isang health conference na manggugulo lang? With no more time left to continue deliberations, the agenda item was deferred to COP11. Every delay is a win for the tobacco companies. Every delay is on the hands of our government officials who allowed it, who held hands with these people and allowed it and are probably cheering na na-accomplish nila yan. Babalik ko, anong na-accomplish nila? Ginulo nila yung mga debates para yung simpleng requirement na ilista nila at isubmit nila yung ingredients na laman ng kanilang produkto, ibibigay nila, hindi nila magawa, nang gulo pa sila, dinilay pa nila, dinamay pa nila buong mundo. Nakakahiya, Mr. President. Former Health Secretaries Alexander Padilla and Esperanza Cabral have said that this is alarming and that the Philippine delegation should take this honor, this dishonor as a wake-up call. Hindi lang, hindi lang wake up call, Mr. President. Ikulong na yung mga taong yan. Budget pa tayo ng budget. Our chairman of the Committee on Health is here. Budget pa tayo ng budget. Debate pa tayo ng debate na increase yung budget ng healthcare. But on the other hand, sabay-sabay sumasakay ng aeroplano at nag-a-attend ng health conference para guluhin yung health conference niya at para i-dilute yung mga provisions na makakapagbigay lang naman ng information sa ating lahat. O kaya tuloy maraming naniniwala, nakakabuti sa kanilang vape. Kasi hindi naman ni pinibigyan ng public, hindi pinapaalam sa public kung ano yung laman yan. At ito, harap-harapan na ipaglalaban nila na itago yung information. Eleven former health and education officials have urged the Philippine representatives to the COP10 of the WHO FCTC to take a stand against e-cigarettes or vapes and vapes amidst an increase in its use among the Filipino youth. Dr. Harmi Galvestan, DOH Secretary 1995, Dr. Carmen Sita, Carmen Cita Riodica, 2001 to 2005, Dr. Esperanza Cabral, DSWD Secretary, 2005 to 2009, and DOH Secretary, 2010, Dr. Pauline Rosel Obial, DOH Secretary, 2016 to 2017, Attorney Alexander Padilla, DOH Undersecretary, 2001 to 2009, Dr. Susan Mercado, DOH Undersecretary, 1998 to 2001, Dr. Madeline Valeria, DOH Undersecretary, 2012 to 2013, and former Education Department officials, Brother Armin Luis Stroh, DepEd Secretary, 2010 to 2016, and Attorney Alberto Muyop, DepEd Undersecretary, 2010 to 2016. I can only speak also for um, for former Secretary uh, Liling Briones because she had made statements about this in the past when I handled the budget uh, of DepEd budget. The Philippines received its Dirty Ashtray Award at COP4 in 2010, but at least it was redeemed the next year, and they received an ORCID award at COP5 when it excluded tobacco industry representatives from its delegation. Yun lang, Mr. President. Bakit ka naman magdadala ng delegation ng industry ang nire-regulate doon? Bakit? Dali nyo sa trade conference. Walang problema. Pero wag ba't mo dadalhin sa isang health conference tapos magpapadikta ka? Yun ang ginagawa po natin, Mr. President. Nakakahiya. At COP9 in 2021, the Philippines was given three Dirty Ashtray Awards. These awards are given to companies and governments seen as peddlers of tobacco industry interest. So the Philippines is a peddler of tobacco industry interest. Nagtaka pa ba tayo? Why would we allow it? Wala tayong ginawa kundi ipaglaban ng ating mga kababayan, ipaglaban ng mga kabataan. But we allow government officials to do this right before our very eyes.
Based on studies collated by the inquiry, the vape law that was supposed to curb tobacco smoking among adults and the youth is instead leading to a spike in the use of the so-called alternatives, which experts said were as harmful, if not more harmful than tobacco. In-depth research is showing that the law is insufficient and leading to a failure to adequately defer some tobacco and related products from ending up in the hands of young people. This flaw is fueling a growing trend of smoking and vape addiction among Filipino youth, and it is now coined as the vape epidemic or the widespread use of vape. A study published online in the National Library of Medicine summarized some of the warning and worries aired by vape law critics in the past years. The law, the researcher said, not only legitimizes the use of vaping products, but also lowered the age at which these can be accessed. The vape law allowed access to tobacco vapes and e-cigarettes to 18 years old when we had already passed a law pegging the age at 21. Despite regulations, a separate study by the Institute for Global Tobacco Control at John Hopkins Bloomberg School of Health found ongoing sales and advertising of tobacco products near many schools in the Philippines. There's ample evidence showing that tobacco companies employ various strategies to promote their products, aiming to attract the attention of children and young individuals. Renowned Filipino Tobacco Control Advocate and Southeast Asia Tobacco Control Alliance, Executive Director Dr. Ulysses Doroteo had described the then vape bill as a retrogressive bill in more ways than one. I will repeat, Mr. President, the vape law, RA 11900, overturned three protective measures that this representation fought for in the syntax law. RA 11487. The jurisdiction to regulate vapes and HTPs was transferred from FDA to DTI, the lowered the minimum age of access from 21 to 18 years old, and allowed more flavors instead of limit it, limiting it to plain tobacco and plain menthol. Mr. President, um, I, we were show, may I ask that we show again the slide? Um, historically, these industries even used doctors or at least actors that looked like doctors to somehow promote that some cigarettes are healthier than others. This was done, if I'm not mistaken, in the 1950s and in the 1960s. And time and again, Mr. President, I kept on saying that same lang naman ang playbook nila. They will still use, whether it's doctors, meron pang dentista, nagsasalita pa sila sa mga conference na patago, pero nalalaman naman natin, kinoconvince ang mga ibang professional na mag-shift sa vape. Hindi dapat nag-shift, dapat wag nang manigarilyo at wag din mag-vape. The tobacco industry is slimy, to say the least. They have a track record of avoiding regulation all over the world. In 2009, we passed the FDA law, which intended to cover all tobacco products and other products that have an effect on health. The industry filed the TRO on FDA. The industry filed the TRO and FDA when FDA issued regulations covering tobaccos. We actually won this case, Mr. President, after some 10 years. The Supreme Court ruled that tobacco companies, tobacco products affect health and therefore is under the jurisdiction of FDA. But of course, nag-motion for reconsideration pa ang mga tobacco companies kasi ayaw na ayaw nila magparegulate. Hindi ko po kinakampihan ng FDA, marami din pagkukulang ang FDA, but they do have the jurisdiction to regulate. Sila lang ang may ability. Kung gusto natin galingan nila, it's either palitan natin yung head para mas magaling or bigyan natin ng pondo para mas magawa yung trabaho. But you cannot just give this jurisdiction to DTI, which is what we did, Mr. President. <laughs> Mr. President, we have a public duty to protect public health. The loss of lives is immeasurable. The young people that may not reach their full potential because they die of tobacco and tobacco-related products, which includes vape and e-cigs, is real. We must aim to make better legislation which prepares us for the future. And we must aim to make these people who are passing on fake and downright um, uh, incorrect information and doing it in public, protecting the tobacco companies, they must be held liable, Mr. President. For the record, these are the COP. 10 delegation. Senior Deputy Executive Secretary Hubert Guevara from the Office of the President led the largest government delegation at COP10 with more than 30 officials and staff. Staff. Wow. Wow. 
malaman po nga kung ano yung budget na pinadala sa WHO because in May, Mr. President, and I was a delegate to the WHO World Health Assembly, not at the expense of the Senate or the government, if I may be clear about it, but I was sponsored by WHO itself to talk about the fight that many of us have, many of you have joined me with against this tobacco company. So now, may 30 na pumunta doon. 30 na ginastusan pa na makarating doon. Congressman, Congress Representative Rodante Marcoleta and his staff, representative from the Presidential Legislative Liaison Office, Department of Agriculture, National Tobacco Administration, Department of Trade and Industry, Department of Foreign Affairs, Department of Health, Department of Education, Department of the Interior and Local Government, Food and Drug Administration. In my humble opinion, Mr. President, talagang ang dapat mag-attend yung Department of Health and Department of Education kasi yan ang nangangalaga ng kalusugan natin and kapakanan ng kabataan natin. Sila okay. Kung may isang dadating from the office of the president, wala naman huwag kong problema. Pero among these people, kasama pa ho dyan ang mga tobacco industry representatives. The Philippines sent the largest government delegation to COP10. Wow! Wow! Ganun ba tayo kayaman? Ganun ba ka-importante sa atin na pagtakpan at, at tulungan ang tobacco industry na kailangan pang samahan ng 30 government officials? Eh, kaya pala magsisi, magkakasakit na at mamamatay na yung kabataan natin because we don't care. We send our government officials to protect the tobacco industry. Madami pa akong pwedeng sabihin, Mr. President, but um, I think I've said the most um, important issues. Sadly, the Philippines has received this uh, Ashtray Award, 30 Ashtray Award, and two years in a row na. Ano to, buong administration? Six years? Yun na lang papagahandaan ko. I would have actually attended, Mr. President, because I wanted to have a voice. But the way it works is the head of delegation is the only one who can speak. And you know very well, Mr. President, they will not make me the head of delegation because I will never support the tobacco industry. So I hope, my dear colleagues, you can continue to support uh, those of us who, who have been standing uh, firmly to protect our youth against the evils of the tobacco industry. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. Speaker, on February 14, 2024, Valentine's Day, my heart was broke <laughs> by Senator Pia Cayetano. Not only my heart, Mr. Speaker, but I think all the hearts of the members of the Philippine delegation to the WHO FCTC COP10 in Panama City. The good Senator called the Philippine delegation as peddler of the tobacco interest. She also said that the Philippine delegation was a mere mouthpiece of the tobacco industry. At ang medyo masakit pa, Mr. Speaker, tinabi po niya na kami pong lahat ay nagpunta doon Para manggulo lamang. Mr. Speaker, ganito na pa ang pagtrato ng isang senadora sa atin. Wala na po ba yung ating pinakaiingatang interparliamentary courtesy? Kung sa bagay, marami na rin po akong narinig nung mga nakakaraang linggo bago pa po kami tumulak papuntang Panama. Pero hindi po ako naniwala na pati po yung pagpunta namin doon para ipagtanggol natin ang karapatan ng ating bansa, lalong-lalo na po yung dalawang batas na ating ginawa sa kapulungang ito. I'm referring to Republic Act 9211 and Republic Act 11900, Mr. Speaker. Sana po ay nabasa ni Senator Pia Cayetano yung declared policy ng dalawang batas na yun. Sinasabi po doon, Mr. Speaker, now, while the state is conscious and responsible in maintaining the health of its citizens, it should also do it mindful of the general welfare of the people, especially the stakeholders of the tobacco industry. Ang ating pong dalawang batas, Mr. Speaker, is talking about balanced policy. Kaya po, ang ating pong rehimen Ay regulation, ay regulation, hindi po control, hindi po ban. 
Kaya po ako sumama sa delegation, Mr. Speaker, para malaman ko po kung paano tinatrato in global stage, lalong-lalo na sa FCTC. Ito po yung Framework Convention on Tobago Control na ito po ay side-by-side -side na ginaganap sa pamatnubay ng WHO. Sinabi po ni Senator Pia Cayetano na nanggulo po kami. Hindi po, Mr. Speaker. Malayo po na gagawin ng Philippine delegation yun. Siguro po ang kanyang binabanggit ay yung punto na pinagtatalunan na po yung agenda number 9 and 10 ng FCTC na kung saan ay binabanggit yung facilitation po ng implementation ng regulation and disclosure of the contents and emission of tobacco products. Pinamimili po ang mga delegates sa dalawang bagay. Unang-una, suspended po yung working group. Ang working group po ay binubuo ng state parties. Mga bansa po ito, Mr. Speaker, na miyembro ng FCTC. Suspended po yung kanilang mandate. At yung kabilang banda, gustong mangyari po ay mag-establish ng expert group para sila po ang gumawa nung gawain ng state parties consisting of the working group. Ang sabi po ng Philippine delegation, Mr. Speaker, hindi po po pwedeng ganun. Sabi namin, there are certain legal principles that cannot be compromised under the appeal of flexibility and consensus. We need to tell them, Mr. Speaker, that the expert group must be subordinated to the primacy and the dominant role of the working group consisting of state parties because they are the ones accountable to and responsible for the interest of the respective nationalities. We have to tell them, Mr. Speaker, that the working group has the mandate. And the working group is the one that will provide the personality and the legitimacy of the work of the expert group. And therefore, the working group cannot arrogate upon itself that mandate exclusively refers to the working group, they being the members of the FCTC. Otherwise, we said, Mr. Speaker, we will be putting the cart before the horse. Technically speaking, they will be sacrificing the authority of the state parties in the altar of the agents of the WHO. Hindi po kami ng gulo, Mr. Speaker. Inilalaban lamang po natin yung ating mga batas na ginawa natin. Sapagkat nakalagay naman po sa charter ng FCTC na ang panuntunan nila that the provisions of this convention shall be subject and in accordance with the national laws of the member countries. May isa pa pong tagpo na nagkaroon ng konting pagtatalo. Kasalanan naman po kasi ng mga bansa na hinaluan ng politika yung aming discussion, Mr. Speaker. Nagsimula po nung unang araw, binibigyan ng pagkakataon na magulat ang bawat bansa kung ano na ang kanilang mangginawa tungkol sa kanilang implementasyon ng Tobacco Control. Nagsalita po yung Ukraine, sabi niya, Madam Chair, nahihirapan po kami mag-implement ng aming Tobacco Control in our country because of the invasion of Russia. So, napolitika na po yung usapan. Ang nangyari po, humingi ngayon ng right of reply ang Russia, pinagbigyan naman po para sagutin yung paratang ng Ukraine. Akala namin tapos na po doon, Mr. Speaker. Bigla pong uh, nakialam muli ang uh, European Union. Kaya sa bandang huli po, gumawa ng paraan ng Russia, bandang huli na po ng aming kapulungan ito, Pinilit po niya na tanggalin yung salitang restriction doon sa guideline na aming tinatalakay. Ang sabi po ng Pilipinas, hindi po po pwedeng mangyari, Mr. Chair, sapagkat under Article 13.3 of the FCTC, yung salitang control at saka yung restriction, the two shares 
equal prominence. Ang gusto po ng Russia para makabawi lang, para makapanggulo, gawin na lamang footnote yung restriction. Dahil ayaw naman po kaming uh, makigulo pa, Mr. Speaker, sumang-ayo na lamang kami na gawing footnote provided a condition or an explanation shall be provided by the FCTC Secretariat na yung relegation niya into a footnote, Mr. Speaker, will not diminish the import and the praseology as it is written in the, in the charter itself. So sumang-ayon din po kami, Mr. Speaker, hindi po kami ng gulo. So bakit po ganito naman ang uh, sinabi ni Senator Pia Cayetano na nagpunta po kami roon para manggulo lamang? Hindi po ba niya alam, Mr. Speaker, bago po kami umalis? Yung delegation po ay nagtrabaho para makagawa kami ng isang national statement para po sa ganun ay hindi hati-hati o halo-halo ang gagawin naming pakikipag-usap sa mga delegado ng FCTC. We worked for about two weeks, Mr. Speaker, bago kami umalis for us to be able to maintain a unified statement on the basis of our national policy. Paano po kaya, Mr. Speaker, kung si Senador Cayetano ang pumunta roon? Para ko nang nakita, Mr. Speaker, ibinenta niya siguro yung dalawang batas na ginawa natin, pinagsakitan natin. Nagagalit siya sapagkat binigyan tayo ng dirty astray for the fifth year, Mr. Speaker. Para sa akin po, Mr. Speaker, mamatamising ko na na magkaroon tayo ng isang libong dirty astrays. Kesa magkaroon po tayo ng isang kabaong na doon ilalagay ang kabuuan ng tobacco industry kasama na po ang mga magsasaka at mga stakeholders na nakikinabang sa industriya ng tabako dito sa ating bansa. Sana po ay bawiin ni Senador Cayetano ang kanyang mga sinabi, Mr. Speaker. Sapagkat hindi po magiging mabuti sa pagitan ng dalawang kapulungan na dapat sana ay magsama para sa ikagaganda ng gawain natin sa paggawa ng mga batas para sa interes ng naghigit na nakararami. Maraming salamat po, Mr. Speaker.